Hey, hello, hello! It is I, Wolfer, aka the Bot of Botic Logs, and your DM today. And with me, as always, is Darren and Livia. Say hello, everybody. Greetings, my precious. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> is that you, Griff? Yeah, well, who else would it be? That was you! I thought that was Livia! That was no, that's not me. I was so confused. I was like, "Whoms, whoms." <laughs> I mean, I can do a lot of crazy voices, but no, that's not one of them. Oh that's my lord! Years and years of Lord of the Rings. Goodness gracious, sir. Let me put on some. If you would not mind uh, checking Griff or Liv. Uh, the Twitch, make sure this music isn't too terribly loud. Just got some nice Christmas music in the background, as it is the December times. Uh, just some very, you know, casual background stuff for us today, this week. I think I lost the link to that. Can you, can you send that again? Absolutely, I can. I'll put it into our chat. There we, there, there, there we go. There we go. Let me pull up chat on my end as well while you guys just check to make sure, you know, we're not terribly loud or anything like that. And then we'll start going with today's session. Do -do -do -do. <laughs> I'll duplicate this and just get some general woodsy lo-fi or woodsy ambiance. It's a little quiet on it's my a, end anyway. It's a little quiet? Okay, good, good. If it's a little quiet, I'll put up a wee bit and that's probably good. I'd rather yeah, a little it's quiet. quite quiet, actually. Quite I quiet. My, uh, yeah, I had to turn my speakers quite up to get it. Okay. And then when you start talking, it sounds like you're shouting at me if it's that high up. Got you. So I'll I'll raise up the music a wee bit, and then here we go. Okay. Oh, it's not just the music. It sounds like the whole stream is very soft. The whole stream, like besides even, me. Even, it, yeah, even. everything. Uh, speaking yeah, in between each other, everything. Okay. Yeah, the music's a little, a little soft too. Okay. Okay. I um, you know what? I will just put on a woodsy ambiance since we're gonna go into the woods today, anyways. And I can turn it up to be kind of around us. As long as... Uh, if, I'm not, like, too much louder than you guys, right? Mm, now you sound decent. Now I sound decent? Okay. Okay, there we go. There we go. Some nice woodsy ambiance. Better than the Christmas themes. Because fuck Christmas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that how we call Krampus? That is true, but Krampus is one of the best things the world has ever gifted us, so like... Hey, are you declaring war on Christmas? You know, I'm just saying, I'm not the biggest Christmas guy. I'll get my girlfriend gifts, and I'll get people gifts and stuff like that. Um, but I'm just saying, at the end of the day, it's more of a capitalist holiday nowadays than it is even a religious holiday. This is true. <laughs> But anyways, guys, so to quick recap n next last time, as now that we're doing some D&D, &D, a.k.a. D20 Modern. Um, and I'm glad to hear that you're better now, Nadia. Hello, hello. Um, we're going to be recapping is that, Darren, you are a man named Chris Griffith. And uh, Livia, you are a lady named Shawnee, correct? Shawnee, yes. Shawnee. Yes. Shani works at um, as an archaeology student, but also kind of part-timey, on and off, kind of like, not necessarily seasonal help, kind of like just constant temp help uh, at the coffee sh coffee shop, slash um, restaurant, slash bakery. A lot of different little things. It's kind of like a generalized little restaurant uh, place uh, called the Blink Dog 182. And other than this, uh, Chris, you are a detective who has no real memory of what's going on or, or basically a, the classic case of amnesia 
but he was able to get some work with the HPD, Homestead Police Department. Uh, you currently have, I believe, a police baton. You're going to come in tomorrow to try to get regulated for knife training. And then, um, or get regulated at knife training so you can have an, a blade. And then the next few weeks you'll be doing training for a handgun. Other than this, you guys are at, um, you guys have been going to therapy at, uh, in Homestead. Let me pull up on stream, uh, our little therapy session. <laughs> there we go, here we go. Uh, let me go bring it up. So you guys have been going to this brick building over here to the right and uh doing therapy sessions i used to do the first therapy session with pine wood scented pine wood candles um shawnee you uh were talking tattoos with helen graves when uh ah fuck her name is lizzie is he oh let me check lizzie kurt i believe let me double check though yeah lizzie kurt um and michael here the dwarf uh, start talking to you guys. You guys, you four, agreed to go to Lizzie's place tonight. And after getting prepared with various items, I do not remember the specifics of. Uh, you guys started uh, basically headed on over to Lizzie's place. Um, Shawnee, if I remember correctly, you have a bit of daddy's money, as you uh, yep. got a new phone. <laughs> That's right. I got a new phone, and I had a little bit of extra left over, so I, I kind of loaded up. Yeah, yeah, you got, you're basically like looking like you're about to go do some wilderness survival stuff right now. Um, it's a little, how do I put it? A little much. Like, it's not bad to be over-prepared by any means, don't get me wrong. But it's a little much compared to, like, say, what Chris is bringing, which is a weapon. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> yep. And I'm a little over encumbered, and I think I also found a table or a desk for us on the way in. Right, because you have an Uber, right? So you're going to have to literally right. go ahead, and when Chris rides up in his car, you're, you're there. So this is just how we're going to start. You're outside this uh, apartment building off on, um, towards Oliver, lower case, uh, lower side of Homestead. Uh, kind of in between uh, both towns. In a little foresty area, you get, um, you might notice I even crossed out some, like, you know, <clears throat> information there. This is just a nondescript apartment building with no name or nothing about it uh, here. Just a uh, place that you see Lizzie probably lives. Uh, Shawnee, as you arrive first with your Uber, you can hear, like, punk rock music and, like, heavy metal hearing from the top right area the opposite of the bike up there uh you do notice let me see check my noochie noochie noots um you can see on the front door as you kind of glance up there is covering the entire front door is an entire band poster you can't tell what band but you do think that the poster itself probably gives way to that that is our punk rocker chicks uh place between the music and the band poster clearly kind of strip across the entirety of her door and even along the side of her wall uh at her entrance not even in her apartment you kind of get the vibe that's lizzie's as you go back to your your table kind of like well what the hell am i going to do with you uh both michael and chris griffith at the same time you guys both pull up seeing shawnee with a table and I assume you probably put even the backpack and some of the goods on the table just to kind of keep yourself from being too heavy right now. Oh, yeah. And it's loaded up with a bunch of other things, too. Um, there's 150 feet of rope on it. Um, there's some chemical light sticks. There's a flashlight. Let's stuff see, what else? Extra stuff there, beyond what she could even yep. keep in her backpack. <laughs> That's right. There, and No, I think I'll keep my binoculars. But she basically is sitting on a table with her arms crossed and it's like, took you long enough. Michael comes out. Uh, Michael is driving, even though he was very well dressed. And I mean very well. Like, you remember, he had like polos, khakis. He looked like he was um, a, uh, a, like, kind of like a, a golf dude, right? Essentially. Or he, he looked very well put. His hair was slicked back. He's driving an old pickup. Like, a real old beat up like uh 
Toyota Ford, you know, like an old school one. Very thick, very sturdy, but still pretty old compared to like the newer models, right? Uh, he comes up, oh my word. Goodness gracious, you really got yourself ready for tonight's investigation, lass. He yells over at Chris, I assume your window is down as you just have a broken radio. And you're like, well, I gotta listen to something, so the birds is cool. Um, and so whenever your radio yep. static turns into actual radio, you usually then would, like, wind up your window. But for now, you just had, like, cracked listening to, like, birds and stuff. Uh, you can hear Michael call to you. Hi, right, Chris, help me load up that table and the stuff into the back of the pickup so it's at least not on public property, eh? Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me just try and open my door, and you'll see, he's, it looks like he's got a newer, nicer pickup truck. Obviously, it's from the police department. The only problem with it is, nothing works. The radio doesn't work, the door handles don't work, the locking mechanism doesn't work, the it's, auto lock doesn't it, work. It's the old beat up from, like, the outside, the outskirts of the, the park lot. It was, like, maybe going to be, like, dumped, but they're like, you know what, give it to the new guy. You know? Yeah, it, it looks decent on the outside, but nothing works like it's supposed to. Hey, nice wheels. Chris just gives a little chuckle. <laughs> yeah, it sure does look like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Michael already trying to lift up the table with Shaniana. He's like, grab the other side! <laughs> okay. Um, both Shawnee and Chris, you guys, uh, if you like to, Chris, I'm not going to assume if uh, you will, but whoever wants to, uh, let me know, and I just need one, one of you to be able to help, uh, Michael. Two of you makes it easy, but one of you helps. Yeah, Chris would definitely go over as he was speaking to, uh, Shawnee. So without Shawnee getting off, you guys both lift it, and Shawnee, you're just going, woo, as you get lifted up into the air. As they pick you up and put you into the back of the pickup. Uh, Shawnee being relatively light. You aren't too too bad to be on there. Oh no, oh no! And I, I'm coaching them the whole time. I'm like, now whip with your legs, not with your back. You don't want to get injured. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to get hurt now, do you? <laughs> uh, with that, um, Michael also you see has some supplies. You see, he has a golf club in the back of his car, uh, in the back of his truck. You see, it's like like under a cage though, as if it's like. Instead of just giving himself, like, a locker, it looks like he put it under a cage, which is just, like, kind of funny, but oh well, right? Like, everyone's got their own quirks. Um, you see also amongst the golf clubs is an old hunting rifle, and as well as just some general survival stuff. Like, you see some granola bars, you see some stuff like that, but you don't see... Um, it, it looks almost like, like, like well, I mean, like, blankets and stuff. It's like if his car gets, like, broken down, you know? It's like just some basic, I, like, while he's out and about. Yeah, I'm going to ask him, do you any good with those clubs? Uh, I'm alright. I think, uh, the weekends at the course tend to keep me at least average, but then again, maybe my expectation's too high to say I'm good. Because, uh, you know, I do hang out with the people, old men who stand the, half the life golfing, you know? So I guess in my eyes, I'm okay. But, uh, you know... Maybe I'm better than I think. You think the size of a watermelon? Hmm? You think you can hit something that's the size of a watermelon consistently? Consistently, no, but, uh... I don't mean at range, I mean point blank. Oh, point blank, absolutely. Then you're definitely taking some of those with us tonight. <laughs> he laughs. You know what? He pulls out one club that's like its old rusty one. Here. He wheels this mightily. I'll take this one. This will be uh, good. But the other ones are too expensive to want to break. But these, this one, solid. Wow, he gives a quick little thuck. You see, he sends a pine cone directly. <laughs> Hold on. He, he doesn't just hit the pine cone next to him. He hits it into a branch, and the branch completely snaps off. That's how much power he gave the pine cone. <laughs> I think that you might just be okay with that one. Uh, oh, uh, as you guys are all out there talking, you hear the door um, with the poster swing open uh, with a slight maybe even tear as it like lightly got the poster caught on it something. You didn't get, give it time to really get uncaught. 
Uh, what's up, everybody? How's it going, bitches? As Lizzie uh, calls out to you guys to come and starts waving you up to her, her room. Is there any chance Shawnee recognizes the band, being that she's somewhat knowledgeable about pop culture? Um, let me think. I would say there's definitely a chance. Maybe, like, what kind of music do you listen to? Because I, I have a specific type of vibe in my head mm. for what Lizzie listens to. If it matches any of the criteria, you, I'll tell you the band. Okay. All right. So, yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. I think Shawnee's more kind of jazzy. Um, jazzy. Any kind of alternative? Alternative? She, uh... Mm, she's kind of more of a... I mean, maybe a little into the, the kind of punk vibe that plays in the coffee shop. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you'll listen that, to Green that's... Day when it comes on, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But she's not she's not unknowledgeable about other other things. Okay. I would say you you go up and you're like you, you, you like just with your basic like you listen to Green Day. Maybe you know all American Rejects. Maybe you you probably listen and kind of enjoy, um, you know, um, some Nirvana like like some stuff where it's like old school rock a little bit stuff that kind of would come on, uh, Foo okay. Fighters you know or sorry the uh, the Food Fighters. Uh, the, I forgot to do my fake band name. <laughs> Shit. The Food Fighters. Uh, people who originate from, uh, you know, from Evergreen. Uh, people like that. Or not necessarily Evergreen, but the upper, above Evergreen. That kind of, uh, the upper Evergreen area. Uh, or I guess it's still Evergreen. Never mind. Yes, they originate from Evergreen. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> you, you notice a Food Fighter poster and a... a What's a great Green Day pun? She, I didn't have one uh, listed down. Uh, uh, green pay. That's what we're doing. Money. Yep. Green pay. Uh, a po two, two kind of vague posters that you're like, oh, I think I know. I don't know what concert that's from, but I know that band. Um, amongst like the dozens just kind of like in there. Uh, just even on the outside already. Hey, yeah. green pay. Nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I've been more into, um... You know, Little Nightmares or, like, um, <laughs> Whale Storm or, so st like, some more, a little bit more Metalhead stuff like that. But, you know, Green Day, uh, Green Pay is kind of like my, my more chill music. Anyways, come on ever in, everybody. I'll go turn the music down so we can chat. Uh, Michael kind of gives you guys a look like, I right, yeah. Well, I mean, we just said we'd help. All right, let's go. <laughs> Um, first enters Michael, he's gonna take the head, uh, who wants to go next after Michael? There's no, I guess, no real need for the marching order, I just like to always know, as, like, a general sense. Yeah, Shawnee will go, go next, she's eager to get in. Okay, alright, so there'll be Shawnee, and then Chris. So, you guys enter her room, and you guys see on one side of the room, it's got, like, a bunch of, uh, guitars, old school, kind of very punk rocky band stuff. But over to the, the right, uh, she also has a intense gaming setup where she has, uh, you know, a whole, like, a lot of pop reference, uh, pop culture reference stuff, etc. But she goes over to her band side and sits in her chair right here. And let me just give you guys a quick description, like a full description here of her room. As you guys walk in... Eh. Um, <clears throat> she explains a few things as she goes to sit down on her chair. Um, her dog, Jackson, greets you friendly with happy wines. Uh, Jackson is a... Uh, God, did I write down her, the dogs? He's a beagle. Her dog, Jackson, is a beagle, because I like beagles. And he just comes up to you with happy wines, and basically wags his tail for pets uh michael kind of gives him a look like uh, uh hello doggy seeing as anything dog-ish after his personal trauma seems to scare him uh he doesn't he's trying not to be a dick to lizzie and you know, like push her dog away but he seems uncomfortable with it um you shawnee he comes up to you and just wags his tail 
as Lizzie explains, um, the back window, I have, uh, two windows. I have, uh, or not two windows. I have two windows in the back, one window in the front, as you probably saw, and then one window in my bedroom and also in my bathroom. Um, I got to the right, over there's my little gaming area, over here's my bedroom to the left, and... Gaming area? Hmm? Gaming area? You see Chris just sort of, he, he waddles a bit closer and he's like, hmm, you've got a dog, you've got a gaming area. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you, you continue on with the band, uh, I, I think I'll entertain your little puppy. Oh, absolutely, please do. That's Jackson, he's a good boy. Um, he's like, hoo, hoo, hoo. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? He gives you that look of me. Oh, it's so fucking me. Oh my god, it better be me. I swear to god, I'll die if it's not me. He gives you that look. Um, other than that, um, she also is like, so, this is our kind of setup, um, here in the back, uh, and she points to essentially what looks like a, uh, a miniature hallway at the kind of the back of her area, where one goes to the right and has, like, a, uh, a bathroom, like, a, it's like, there's no actual hallway, it's just like a little crevice that has a window, and then to the left of the little crevice is the, the bathroom. So again, over there's the bathroom facing the woods, in the front faces the parking lot, uh, keep in mind, we're on the second story, and then we have one in my bedroom, and then one right there at the crevice. Uh, or also over there, just in the bathroom as well. But all three of those are facing the forest. Um, and let me see. Oh, and uh, be careful as Michael, you see, is like leaning against the wall. He almost leans against her vinyl collection, almost breaking one of her vinyl records. And she's like, oh my god, just be careful, please. Just the <laughs> heck. That's, that, those are my very precious items. This is my collection. Please be careful. Um. Chris, you're over here on her gaming setup. Let me go put you over here petting her dog next to the gaming setup. Eh. Wow, God. Yeah. And then imagine, uh, I'll just draw a dog real quick. Imagine dog. There I go. Instead of imagine dragons, imagine dog. There you go, there's puppers. Um, so, as she's there kind of explaining stuff, uh, you guys are looking around. Do you have any questions for, for Lizzie um, before she kind of divulges what happened? She's like, yeah, um, I'm, I can tell you guys about what happened that night with the tapping and stuff. And then we can go and start investigating it. But... Um, any, any, like, questions you guys have beforehand? She looks maybe a little nervous to, like, just immediately progress forward into, like, talking about what happened. Hey, mind if I use the bathroom real quick? Oh, yeah, please do. That's... All right, so Shani goes down. down. Did you describe it as, like, a crevice? <laughs> Sorry, so... A hallway? Uh, let me, let me, on, on this, like, little area where Chris is, I'll... I'll draw in, in, uh, let me see. I'll draw in, I think pink would come out. Yeah, pink will stand out on the TV. Okay, let me draw what the house looks like so you understand what I mean. So here's this, right? And the little crevice is, like, this little area, like, right here in the back. And it just leads, like, a bathroom okay. right here. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. Yep, that makes sense. All right. There we go. So, Shani runs off and... She'll be back shortly, but she just wants to take a look at the window before anything's said or done that, that looks outside. Okay, yeah, yeah, so you go outside. Uh, Chris, you're just having a grand old time with the good old Beagle boy. He is just, like, wagging his tail, get on his belly, showing you his belly for pats. He is being the goodest of boys, wanting all the pets. Uh, Michael is just discussing music with uh, Lizzie. You hear that he's kind of talking about how he prefers classical music. And she's like, well, all right, Boomer. Uh, that kind of vibe. Like, uh, all right, good for you. Um, Shawnee, you go to the bathroom. And I thought I had something for the bathroom, like an image. I do not. Imagine a toilet with a window. <laughs> it is just a very basic window. The kind of one where it has a handle that as you crank it, it like slowly cr like, open. You crank it the other way, it closes. Uh, very kind of classic for Washington, I believe, at least in the poorer areas, or, like, less, uh, well-to-do, they have, have a lot of those. Um, other than that, uh, it's just a 
nice porcelain uh, porcelain toilet. Uh, like average bathroom, nothing special. You got you see she has maybe a little voodoo doll and a pentagram hanging from the roof as it looks like little decorations. But other than that, it's nice. it's very simply just uh, a very classic bathroom. I guess she has a um, a cinnamon candle in the bathroom and cinnamon hand wash. You know, that's details. But other than that, the the bathroom right. is pretty well, like, plain and simple. Well, after a little bit, Shani will come out and rejoin everybody else and say, nice candle. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love cinnamon. Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, so here's the lowdown, everybody. All right. So I was over there with Jackson. He was on my my lap like a good boy. And we were playing some video games, and I was playing the latest Telltale game. Um, and I was so en enthralled that I thought at first the tapping was coming from the game. And I was like, well, Batman, what's up? You go look around. Maybe the Riddler's being a little fucky boy. Uh, and so I'm, I'm trying to look around, and I, I, I hear that I pause the game, and the tapping's still going. So I'm like, what's, what the hell? So I get up and I, I'm like, Jackson, go check it out. Like, run around, boy. Like, is there anything going on? And he he's just so confused. He starts kind of whining because he's like, I don't, he hears the tap. I think he notices it because he was like asleep before. So then at this point, he starts to notice it. And he, he starts whining and like giving like little yelps. Um, and so I'm looking around like panicked. Like, what the hell? And at the, at, uh, I swear, at the front window, I hear tapping towards the parking lot. And so I go to open the window and nothing's there. But then, and I'm like, well, maybe it's just my imagination, right? So I close the, the window and like, uh, maybe maybe it's a branch or something. Maybe I'm just losing, maybe I just need sleep. Maybe I just need sleep. I'm not losing my mind. I just need sleep, right? So I go to the bathroom and I go to splash water in my face. And that's when I hear this happening again. On the window, right there. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, that's, this is not cool. I, I, that's, I'm on the second story, no one's supposed to be here, unless I have some, but then I got excited, because like, what if I have a secret admirer who's like throwing pebbles at my window, right? So I go to open it, and it's just a fucking tree there, like, there's just trees, like, and Shani, when you looked out, there was not a tree next to the window, it was like a good 30 feet back from the trees, there was just like, uh -huh. a few trees just like near my window, and I'm like, what the fuck, that's why I don't remember them being there. But, like, whatever. What the tree look like? Well, I mean, it was just a, a good old, like, pine tree, or uh, the other one's, like, a fir tree. Like, the kind of stuff that would be in this woods, you know? Evergreen trees. And, um, almost like, like, like Christmas trees, in a way. Or, or, um, well, one of them was, like, a Christmas tree. The other one was, like, an actual, like, pine pine tree and stuff like that. Um, but they were just there. And I swear that, like, there was a bunch of bushes and all that, and... Then I, then when I woke up the next morning, because I was like, well, that's weird. So nothing was there, though. So I closed the window, and I, I mean, the tapping would appear every now and then, but I kind of just ignored it, because, like, what the hell else am I going to do? Um, eventually, I, I ran out to my, my, when I was trying to go to bed, I, like, opened my window to see there's nothing there. So I ran out and screamed, like, let me sleep, you bastard. Uh, and then eventually, no, no more tapping that night. So at least it was respectful, I suppose. But, um... It just took them until 2 in the fucking morning. Other than that, like, I, I don't really have uh, anything else. I mean, I guess there's tapping every now and then. But, like, I swear... Well... Hold on. And she, this is where she looks like her face gets a little serious. Well, I guess there was one thing that was when I ran outside. While, while she's describing this to us, I'm, I'm looking around where she's pointing, trying to investigate if I still notice anything. Yeah, so starting with the front window, as you go to it, um, you do notice slight scratch marks on the window. That's, I think, without rolling investigation or getting detailed looks, you can notice ever so slight scratch marks on the window. And these are, like, apparent. Like, you would, like, you would look like, God, what's, what the fuck's up with your window, dude, you know? I mean, I can, I can roll an investigation if you'd like me to. Yeah, go ahead. Get you more detail if you like. <laughs> no, Nat 1, what the fuck? 
Not one. Okay, you're like, wow, God, man, the branches must have been really fucky, like, and bl like blown around here. Jesus. <laughs> like to you, it probably just looks like a a lower end house that hasn't been taken care of in regards to the window, maybe. Um, then when she goes to the back window, uh, you can roll investigation again if you like. Um, yeah. But as you go to the bathroom. You do just like Shawnee. I will say you do notice a lack of trees. And what stuff. was it in? Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. This time. Nat one to nat twenty. You do notice that the nat twenty. Nice. That you go. So you went from the the window up front, being like, "Oh man, maybe she does have a secret admirer who fucked up her window, or maybe this is a previous tenant." To like, you're like, "Wait, there's no trees here," and you notice footsteps, big footsteps. That maybe look almost like natural gaps in the grass before, to you looks like footsteps going from a few ten odd feet from the window back into the forest. Um, and on top of that, you look at the window this time, and you can see deeper scratch marks, real deep, carved in scratch marks that like just really. This time, like, they're not, they're not, like, it's, like, it's not going to be confused with, like, poor maintenance or anything like that. This is very clearly, like, someone was clawing at the window as this, like, kind of slightly opaque, not opaque window is, even on the o other side where you're not really able to see through so, so well, it's still very clearly scratched from the outside. Um, First thing Chris does when he sees that is, I need to find out who installed these windows. Mm -hmm. look, look at how deep that is, and it doesn't even shatter or anything. This is mm -hmm. good quality. It is fantastic quality. They're like crystal windows. Um, when you you even see it during certain parts, it's like the tap marks so they leave little dents into the glass. Um, you do see around the dents though, there are slight cracks forming, as if those were a little harder and more poignant, like <laughs> like poking into it. Um, but as she's saying, uh, you're doing this. Uh, she finally gets to her little point where she's talking like, but there was something out there. And Shawnee and Michael are listening. Uh, Eric, or no, Eric, Chris, you stick your head back out. There was, I think that, I, I still, this is what I wasn't going to say at first, but I thought they were just bushes, but like, maybe there are still bushes. This out in the woods. They, I just thought I saw something move, like leaves and roughage and like a branch. I thought like, like, like was moving around and I don't know it's it's just weird you know there's just weird movements in the woods and it makes me uncomfortable Michael speaks up well I mean that's understandable makes you uncomfortable you know like uh you're you're supposed to feel safe in your home and now you feel like someone's watching you no no uh, perfectly valid to feel uncomfortable <laughs> what time of day is yeah. it? Um, it is currently. Let's say it is that evening that you guys were gonna meet up. So let's okay. say. I'd be shining my uh, flashlight into where I see the footprints into the trees and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say yeah. It's like maybe sunset right now, and as the sun is setting, uh, pretty quickly, you're you're able to take a look. And you can see that they do go into the woods. It is very clearly, in your eyes, footsteps to the woods. They're, and then around them, you actually see smaller, looks like, almost like something has kicked up the moss and grass around the footsteps as they get closer to the woods. Almost like other tinier creatures or something was like running around them. You know, Lizzie, Shawnee says, I would be really uncomfortable too if I had a tree who was a secret admirer. That sounds really disturbing. Well, I, what do you mean? A tre trees don't move, Shawnee. The, like, it's freaky stuff, but it's probably other things. <laughs> like a nature um, spirit or well, something. Chris pops his head back in. Well, yeah. interesting you should say that. Uh, well, are you all up for an adventure then? Well, that's why we're here, right? Michael's like, yeah, yeah. Well, I found some uh, 
some footprints leading into the woods. So, you following me? Hey, let's go. Lord. What are we, uh, what are we getting into? As Lizzie's like, yes, let's go! As she starts to go run uh, to her front door. You see she, um, she takes a minute where she's about to call Jackson. And she's like, mm, Jackson, stay, boy. If anything happens, I need you to be okay. All right, Jackson, who's a good boy? Jackson, you be here. I, I take one of the dog treats from the cupboard. And I'm like, no, come on, Jackson, you're going with me. <sighs> oh, she kind of gives you a look. Like, like, <laughs> I, like, I give her a look and I'm like, do you really want to leave Jackson, this goodest boy, here when something has been trying to get in? She puts her hand on her chin, takes a moment to think. She's like, fine, but he stays in between all of us. He's Jackson, you be a good boy and stay near boy. There. You guys uh, start to walk out. Jackson doesn't have a leash. He's a. She's like, I, I just, I still need to buy him one. He's just been such a good boy and follows. Uh, as the sun starts to kind of set, hold on, uh, here, I'll go over, start with this one. As the sun starts to set, and it gets later in the evening, but not quite dark yet, um, you guys are going into the woods, walking. The breeze coming on through the pine trees, giving you guys a nice, earthy, natural smell. The, the the bright greenness of the uh, of the area is refreshing to those of you who like nature. Um, I know personally when I go out into the, the, the this kind of nature, it feels great to me. It's like both cold but refreshing. It's a sting on the nose with the cold, but like in a waking kind of wake you up kind of way. You know, it's it's like coffee, but in a very natural, um, just visual way, and. But as the sun sets, it starts to take on a creepier tone. The shadows grow longer. Seems like the branches become nails and claws reaching out for you. Leaves and branches breaking sound like footsteps or something stalking you. You guys start to go deeper and deeper into the woods. You guys You know, I don't like this. You don't like this. Shani just... I don't, I don't like this. And she she takes her knife out and is like kind of shining a flashlight with with her knife kind of attached to it. Kind of like a... I don't, I don't know what the analogy is. But you know how like sometimes firearms have like flashlight attachments? She's, yeah. she's got that but with her knife. It's like, stay back. Stay back. <laughs> Absolutely. You are... Uh... A little freaked out, Michael puts his hand on your shoulder to try to calm you. You almost swipe at Michael. He's like, boy, calm there. Calm down, Shawnee. We're going to be okay. Ain't nothing out here right now. All right, at least with us. I think we're okay. We're, we're hunting it, not it hunting us. Uh, Chris, you do real. Uh, see, as you're following the footsteps, the big footstep stops at a tree. While all the little ones kind of around it are running into the woods. Uh, I'll, I'll take a closer look at the tree where these footsteps stop. Uh, as you take a closer look, go ahead and you can either give me... Lord, let me pull up the D20 modern uh, character sheet again, as I always forget to do. Is there, I know there isn't D&D, but is there a natural skill while I pull this up? I suppose it would either be survival or investigation. Yeah, give me, uh, you can choose. Survival and investigation both will give you, like, different, different information. Let's try investigate. You're kidding me. What? Oh, I went from a nat 1 to a nat 20 to a nat 2. Damn. So, you're looking at this, and what was that second roll? <laughs> oh, I was just testing if it's going to give me a 19 now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, I'll, I'll say the first one, investigation at the very least. 
Um, yeah, the first, both of them were investigation. Oh, okay. The second was first. Gotcha, gotcha. So, you're looking into it, and the footsteps stop like a good five feet before where the tree stands. And you see, it's not just one tree. It's like uh, several trees kind of around it, right? There's a forest. There's lots of trees. Um, all within, like, the five-foot area. But you just happen to be going forward following it. And there's one, like, that is another five feet away. As if it's lined up where the footsteps would be. Um, looking around, though, you don't see any other tracks. You look where all the little tiny ones are running around. I guess I can give you this much information because it's pretty obvious. All the tiny ones are kind of gathered to the left of it, as if it's like moving to the left, uh, and they seem to be continuing on to the left. You don't know, you can't pick up or even see or make out any other big footprints that way, but at the very least, the, le um, the little ones are starting to go left. It's hard to keep track of anything more beyond that. Uh, Lizzie, right uh, behind you, flashes her flashlight from her phone. Um, let me see, give her a quick roll. Plus hers. Let me check hers. Oh, not too big of a bonus. Um, I think the footsteps stop here. <laughs> Did you roll in that one? No. <laughs> it's not that very good, though. <laughs> uh, Jackson, come here, boy. Come here. You you pick up anything strange? Uh, he's sniffing, and he barks at a tree to the right. Um, but Shawnee, on the off? other hand, is looking at the tree directly ahead, and she starts climbing the tree. She's like, I can maybe get a better look from up here. I'm gonna try to climb this tree a little bit. Jackson... Wait, did you say I'm doing that, or, or Lizzie? Sorry, uh, Lizzie. Not, my bad, not Shawnee. Lizzie. Okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, mind control. My uh, bad, my bad, my bad, Miss Uh Lizzie so, starts to climb up. So, Shawnee, I'm wondering at this point, um, can I take out my cell phone and start, like, recording everybody doing this investigation? Kind of like I'm doing a documentary? Yeah, some Blair Witch shit. You, put, you take out your phone, yeah, you put it yeah. in your pocket, and you just have it on constant record. So this is an investigator in his element, everybody. Watch what he does next. As he tells Jackson, the dog, to come on over, the dog sniffs. As a, uh, Lizzie starts climbing a tree, she's like, I'm just going to get up here and see if I can see um, any footsteps further away. I'm not going to go high. I'm just going to go like 10 feet. She does only climb about 10 feet to like the first set of branches. As Jackson starts barking to a tree to the right, uh, Chris, you follow it. This tree seems average. I mean, it's a tree. But he's barking at it. There are, I would say, a few branches low to the ground for the tree that he's barking at. What is what you want me to? And he sort of sticks his hand towards one of the one of the lower branches, as intending you, to break it off. As you go to break it off, you grab it and you go to kind of snap. Um, you hear a slight groan. <laughs> From the, the woods itself. Not necessarily from the tree, but the woods itself. As a branch smacks you on the head from behind. You feel a hearty thump oh. as a, a branch hits you. What the fuck was that? You turn around. Lizzie falls from the tree. Ah! Fuck! Ow! Fuck! Hmm. Johnny, where did you say you kept that knife? I think I'm gonna get some firewood. Oh, that, I don't know if you want to cut wood with it. You can try. It's, it's just like a. It's like I don't a know. It's a little bigger than a. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's definitely not a long He's just intending to take out the Grish and he's just gonna stab the fucking tree. I mean, if you want a marshmallow stick. As as you're you're you're, you're all like you know having a moment of frustration or anger. Um, or confusion in Shawnee's case, it sounds like. Uh, we got Michael. He's like, aye, 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 stop playing with the trees. Uh, as he, um, he's looking off about 20 feet to the left where the little ones stopped initially. There's more tiny footprints this way. Maybe they, wherever they are, know where the big ones are. 
Shall we go investigate? Shawnee takes out her disposable camera and snaps a picture of the little footprints. All right, yeah, and don't forget the Sounds big ones we've been following. If you just start recording, like, he's, like, pointing them. No, we, we came out here following those big ones, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got those. And she goes back and gets those. That <laughs> takes a quick pick. <laughs> um, with that, Lizzie gets up. He's like, yeah, I, I think I saw some movement in that direction before I got pushed off. Ah, something, I swear, pushed me. Like, the branch moved or something. Yeah, yeah, branch, something smacked me on the head as well. Um, keep your eyes open. He's going to take out his baton <laughs> and his flashlight. He's going to shine it directly at the tree. And then he's just going to try and bash the tree. Just as for smacking me up the head. As it gets a little darker, you guys venture further into the woods. It starts to fall upon night. The tree gives a... You hear deep into the woods back. Um, you are confused and scared by that weird groaning deep into the woods. You know, it's like these Lizzie and Michael. I guess I can't speak for you two, but you see they're kind of like what? The fuck? They give that look to uh, to y'all and each other. Um, what is the marching order as you guys go further into the woods? Who 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 is in front of who? I'm kind of in the back. Suppose so I'm in the front. Front, back, and then Lizzie and Michael in the middle. Yeah, I suppose since I'm doing the investigating, I'm, I'm leading them in the investigation, so I'll probably be in front. Lizzie's like holding Jackson. I don't want you walking and getting caught by anything, big boy. As you guys are walking, Scooby Doo style. Um. Does a nat twenty? hit you, Chris. Uh, one second. It does not. A what's your bonus? A natural 20? <laughs> what? What's your bonus? Um, like plus 5. Fuck off. Yeah, what's that your What's your defense? No, I was just screwing around. My, my defense is only 17. <laughs> okay. Like, what kind of armor do you have? He's oh, got I don't have armor. I, armor. I call it the leather jacket. <laughs> so, um, you're walking, and as you're walking, one of the branches you go to the push out of your way shifts out of your way, and mm, Lizzie and Michael gasp. Shawnee's a little hard for you to see. As, um,. I guess neither Chris nor Shawnee, you guys can't really see, so I won't describe it. But the uh, branch smacks you in the back of the head, Chris. That's twice. Twice. Screw it. As you turn around and say screw it, another branch takes out your knee. That's it. I'm burning this forest down. Am I getting any of this on camera, or is it just too dark? After the, the first one gasp, you push past them, Shawnee, and you can see that the branch that he tried to push out of the way is physically moving across the tree, as if it's gliding. And it's, boom, smacked him on the knee. And now it's gone up into the tree, as if it's a physical entity of the branch. It's moved up. I, I want to get any part of the closest branch and snap it off. You just start swinging at branches and snapping all of them nearby off. And, not, and then I'm going to take all those pieces, build a little fire at the base of the tree, and I'm like, anybody got, anybody got any lighters? Hey, 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 you know, they haven't, they haven't outright attacked the rest of us. Only you. Fair. I start spraying it with a bit of mace since it's flammable. Uh, I just need something to set it aflame. Hey, hey! Shawnee gets in the way and starts kicking at the kicking at the wood. Hey, listen! You can't just decide to set a fire in the middle of Evergrove. 
What if it starts a wildfire? Lizzie's also stands next to Shani. Yeah, that's... Look, I get you're angry. We can't just burn every tree in the fucking woods, Chris. We're not. We're burning this tree. Yeah, but how do you, how would do you plan if it goes to the very top of this tree, the fire, to stop it from reaching the other tops of the trees and lighting the whole fucking forest on fire? Hmm? Oh, very, very easily, my dear. How about we try talking first? Then pyrotechnics. You, you, you see, that's the problem nowadays. Always talking, talking. Well, you're investigating. You don't talk during an investigation in the quiet part. That's for when you've got some clues. You know, maybe that's time, the problem with you, with you cops. You never talk. Yeah, well, maybe that's a problem with you archaeologists. You only talk to the dead. She just goes, hmm, and she starts uh, to Shani, speak. In... you... Yes. As you speak, you, you can go to finish that, but I'm just going to say, you see a br two branches look like they're coming down from the tree behind Chris, and like they're about to grab him. But go to finish what you're saying first. She starts speaking in Elvish. <laughs> but, uh, may I don't know what the state of Elvish is here. It's just one of the languages that she mm -hmm. she knows. But she starts speaking in Elvish with her hands up and says, We don't mean you any harm. Ignore this guy. He's a jerk. Can we talk? The two branches that look like they're about to start strangling Chris like a fucking... Like, a, <laughs> like the maniac. Uh, a hey, maniac. Um, the branches <laughs> stiffen out back to normal branches. And you just hear deep into the woods. Well, it sounds like they understood me. Line? Hey, let's follow that voice. I've got a better idea. That sounded like a whine. Jackson? You see the stick wall? You see the stick? Yes. He doesn't speak, but I, I'm saying yes. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> If Jackson just randomly started being a Scooby Doo impression, <laughs> I just forget not to speak when I when I bark as a dog. <laughs> Interesting. Thanks for sharing that tidbit. Uh, you see, Jackson likes the stick. I, I throw the stick lightly into the air so that he can catch it. As and Jackson goes to catch it, a branch grabs Jackson. I grab Jackson. He's within five feet. Jackson and uh, and Chris, you guys get dragged along the ground with roots in deep into the woods. Woo! In third, I dig in my heels. You are picking me or the dog. You got to give me a strength check as you and the dog are now being dragged across the ground. The dog, not seemingly hurt, it's not like it's tight, like where it's like like breaking his neck or nothing, but you do see that it is a whole a hearty grip on the dog. 14. 14? Alright, let me get this ready. So you are getting dragged down into the woods. I'll make you a little smaller, like there. Shawnee, you're up here a little closer. Along with Michael, who's like right here. -ish. So, with before you even got your feet dug in, I will say, um, it did immediately move you 20 feet deeper and away from everyone else. Then, oh yeah, that, that's more than fair. As you dug your feet in, you were able to halt the progress, not gain like any ground, just halt the progress of it dragging you forward. With that, um, Jackson starts to howl and yelp. <laughs> Lizzie runs over. Jackson! Running her full speed immediately over. She... <laughs> Shani, she grabs the knife from your hand. Uh, you can either give it to her, or she's going to try to strength check it to grab it from you real quick. Yeah, she can take it. She grabs I've the got knife my hand on my phone. Runs over and slashes at the, the branch. The roots, essentially, grabbing you. Ooh. She accidentally cuts you, Chris. As everything is going around, she panic slices. She cuts the edge of your palm. I'm not going to say she does too much. Okay, 
Well, I'm gonna re-roll that. I don't really need you to do... Okay, there you go. You take one less damage. You take three damage. <laughs> you take three damage. I was about to say, since, since we're stuck where we are, should you get a bandage on it? Yeah, probably soon. We You're definitely going to want to get a bandage on it. But she accidentally cuts the back of your hand. She's like, oh my god, I'm sorry, Chris. Uh, uh, um, here, she she tries to hand you the knife as she grabs Jackson and starts trying to help you hold him. Quick. Uh, she's going to age you. Let me see how much she is able to give you as well. A range weapon. Let's see if I can slice it. Okay, you're 14 plus or 10. You guys are equaling a 24 right now to try to hold Jackson. Michael looks to you, Shawnee. Oh, shit, what should we do? Well, it worked the first time, so Shawnee's going to chase after them and again say in Elvish, Hey, could you let the dog go, please? The dog the dog doesn't mean anything. It's just this guy. It's your fault we're in this situation, Shawnee. <laughs> My fault? You are able to cut the branch, but it's not deep. You're able to get a shallow cut. It's like can be halfway cut. You get dragged another 10 feet in. You and Lizzie and Jackson, all three. As Shani, you have to continue running along with them, like another 10 feet. Michael, trying his best to keep up. Uh, speaking um, Spanish, yeah. just dwarvish. He's like, uh, the, 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 I, I don't know if you speak this language, but please, fucking let go of them. I'm, I'm going to try and brace myself on one of the trees and then start pulling harder. As you do... Um, a branch comes down and slaps you right in the leg. It doesn't inherently move you, but it hurts like a bitch. I'm used to dealing with pain. Go ahead and... Just and... Like, you see his legs flex and he just... <laughs> <laughs> nice. Go ahead and give me... Um, a... Give me another attack roll against it. What is going on with the rules today? Let me let me try something else. Fuck that. Yeah. Eh, you know how long it's one. been since I've taken out my physical dice? A minute, I assume. Uh, I think the last time was in the the Halloween game that we were doing. Ah, that one you needed that to try to stay alive. <laughs> Yeah, that one was just to stay alive. That one was not even to kill something. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll let you reroll your physical dice to see what you get instead of that nine. <laughs> uh, it's not that much better. It's a 14, so plus two, 16. See, now you're able to at least get the knife solidly into a crevice and start just pulling and ripping and gripping and just, like, slicing upwards and around Jackson without hurting him. And, I mean, that's the real issue, right? Is that you're trying to do this without hurting Jackson. If you're just trying to slash roots, it'd be yeah. one thing. But trying not to no, kill the dog is... Him. Exactly. Try not to kill or hurt the dog is, like, the biggest thing. So, going up and around Jackson, you're able to cut him out. The, the roots wither into the ground... As you guys are all there, you uh, Lizzie grabs Jackson real quick, hu holding him, hugging him. And as you guys are sitting there, all four of you, um, let me see. You see off in the distance. Oh, shoot. I didn't have it ready. Let me go get this up. Here we go. Get this ready so you guys can see this, and then I'll show y'all. Eh. You guys see this standing there, twitching, ticking. Well, we found your secret admirer. As you say that, it turns and runs. Do you give chase? Hey, come back! And I'm I'm just basically holding a flashlight and my in one hand and my uh, cell phone that's recording a video on the other and I'm chasing him. Okay, what are you using? Um, it, he's like let's say twenty feet right now. 
I'm gonna throw my baton and see if I can hit him in the head. Go ahead. Go ahead and give me a solid baton throw. That is a 24. Twenty-four, you say? Yeah, nat twenty, and I've got a plus four on ranged weapons. All right, let me get this. Yeah, now it's time for for action music in the woods. Here you go, forest combat music. Oh, there don't we go, do everybody. That. I'm only HP left. I hope this uh, sounds all right. It's not too terribly loud. There we go. So you hit him in the back of the head. It doesn't do too much. I think it does like 1d6. Yeah, it's not even like that much damage overall. Um, I would say uh, even like e even just to like stopping him, it doesn't do too much. You hit him, and no matter what damage you roll, he's still running. It, you just kind of ping him. Yeah. Or it, it's just sort of like, I'm coming for you, dickhead. And awesome. then I'm going to run at it. Alright, cool here. While I, I, I do this, would you mind uh, checking the music's okay? I just want to make sure it's not too terribly loud and that we're still being heard okay? Yeah. Uh, everybody in like chat, also waifu, are, if you're able to let me know if we sound okay. I just want to make sure that the, the combat music's not too loud, not too quiet. Not too bad. I just, just kind of make sure that we're able to be action packed and also, you know, still be freaking here. <laughs> it sounds good to me. Sounds good? Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good? Okay. Thank you. So, as you guys uh, ping him, you deal a bit of damage as your baton falls to the ground. Uh, it runs deeper into the woods. You guys give chase. As you guys run, 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 run. I would say roughly a minute of just running. You guys go several hundred feet as finally you guys come to a clearing, an open clearing. And let me get you guys your your boys ready. So it runs out to the middle. You guys are coming out here from the top. We got Michael. Shawnee, let me make sure you have control over Shawnee. Chris, I'll make sure you have control over Chris. And then I'll grab Lizzie here. There we go. So you guys are running. Um, you guys have control of your characters? Yep. All right. So go ahead and roll me initiative as I describe the scene you run into. You run into this open area with uh, this tree boy, tree man human thing running out um, into the middle. And it stops. And as it stops, it waves its hands all around as it is calling for others. Let me go ahead and roll as well for the initiative here. Man, I am rolling high for the DM. Holy shit. Okay, so it's gonna go... Okay, I'm going to start with the enemies. As he's waving about, you guys aren't able to do anything before several more of them come out. One from over here in the woods. I'll make it big so you can kind of see what it is. Here it is. Oh my gosh. One comes out right next to you. Two more from behind him. And another one from over here. Hold on. So you kind of see Holy what you're fighting. Shit. Well, you did it this time. And then from behind you, 
two more right here. Come out right behind Lizzie and Michael. They don't do anything yet. They're watching you, staring. Um, the two right here, I would say, get a, a little too close to Michael and Lizzie. And around you, Shawnee. They're all just staring at you right now. Michael goes first. Hi. Shawnee. Chris. Lazy. Any ideas what we should do? They're getting a little close. Feeling a little angry. Should have stuck with my idea and burned them. I'm starting to think. I think that's why we're. That's why we're in this mess in the first place. Yeah, uh, you're really pissing me off with that fire on our cruise, but I think this might be the time where we actually need it. And he says, fuck it! And he swings forward at the the one in front of him. Um, okay. I didn't mean to roll twice, but to roll once. Jesus. Let me just re-roll that one. There. Eight. In between both of them. There I am. Uh, oh, not right. In between one. Seven and two. Jesus. Uh, so eight plus his bonus. He's... Let me double check. Hold on. I believe he's able to get this, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He is able to hit it still. It's not too high of an AC. So, he swings forth, and you see he absolutely bashes... Uh, this one's head in with the golf clubs. Let me see. I'll consider it like a solid club club. Like a great club. Oh yeah, he's able to bash it. It doesn't die immediately. But it looks already immediately damaged. Like, it's its head is now caved in. One of its arms are twitching weird. It looks like it's, it's staggering back and forth. It already looks on death's door after just one quick beating from Michael. Like, maybe if he hit it a little harder, he could have killed it right then and there. All right, Chris, it is your turn. Did I pick up my baton when we were chasing it? Yes, I assume so. Okay, well, in that case... I think, Michael, you've got the right idea. I'm gonna go in and take a swing at this thing. The right idea is, is come help me. You swing on the one that he's at, gonna give me an attack roll? Oh, for fuck's sake, my rolls have been all over the place. Just barely missing. It staggers back up against the tree <laughs> waving at you as if like faking you not to kill it you swing and slam into the tree above Ooh. okay uh i do not know how the actions work in d20 modern i'm assuming since i've attacked i can still speak to the thing yes i don't want to kill you you're trying to kill me i'm just defending myself are, are we going to be civilized, or am I going to have to burn down a forest? Alright, you have to wait for its turn to see its response. Is there anything else you'd like to do with your, your remaining turn? I, I will tell Shawnee that this one might be civilized. I think we just need to kill the other one. You and your killing. Well, it's not like you're the one that's been attacked since we've entered in here. Shawnee, it is your turn. What would you like to do? Alright. Shawnee is terrified that Shawnee doesn't want to attack yet. And also, even if she did, she probably couldn't. So she's gonna, um... See, I see this big purple tree here. I'm wondering if I can, like, maybe hide behind it or try to use it as cover. Um, and I'm gonna take out my pepper spray and say... Stay back or I'll shoot. Huh. And I'm, I don't know if there's I don't know if there's like a hold action or something, but if anything comes near me, I'm just gonna try to unload with it uh, with my pepper spray. Okay. Yeah, that, that works. Um okay. then it will be Lizzie's turn. Lizzie, um, holding Jackson close to her chest, starts to cry. I please leave us alone. We don't want anything. We're just here to, to investigate. See what? Why you're bothering me? Leave us alone! As she says that, um, let me roll real quick. As she says, "Leave us alone." Um, 
She says, leave us alone or you'll burn! And as she says burn, the word you see physically comes out of her mouth. Burn. And as it travels across the, gra uh, the air, Shawnee and Chris, you can see this, it slams into the, the creature, setting it aflame. She looks as shocked as it is. And as I assume you guys, you guys have never seen anything like this. She said burn, and then that creature lit on fire. She looks shocked. The creature burns to death in front of you. Which one was oh. that that's burning to death in front of us? Uh, the one over here by Lizzie. I just got rid of it. Okay, cool. The Lizzie, enemy. I think that's the wrong one. Uh, she she's like they they all need to go go away now now she's she's panicking. You can tell Lizzie's panicking. Um, it is now their turn. Lizzie, take a deep breath. As you turned away, the one below you, Chris, slams up with a branch. Does a 16 hit. You have a 17 AC, right? 17. Okay, let me go check its bonuses then. Uh, it's more than, even if it's just a plus one, it still needs it. Yeah, it's literally a plus one. <laughs> okay, then unfortunately you will get hit barely by this. It's not too much though. Uh, it's claw, it's branch stabs into your side. Um, just dealing a d4. It deals five damage. As it stabs into your side and pushes you off of it a little bit. I guess I'm killing this one as well. This one bomb rushes towards Lizzie, Kurt. And... It stops in front of her and takes a moment to look at her before raising his hand and back attempting to backhand her, send her flying. Um, it looks like it was taking a moment to look at her and then looked at her dog and it decided that it had to send them both flying. As it misses, as she ducks below, crying, running towards Shani. Please leave us alone! Leave us alone! As it slams into the tree next to you guys. These ones. Moving forward just a wee bit, getting closer. This one seems to be coming around you, Shawnee, right here. Go ahead and give me your attack rolls. You mace it as it gets close. Okay. Hang on, let me bring up my character sheet. <laughs> so that's not going to do it, I don't think. Um... Oh wait. Nope. No, I don't think that's gonna hit. Yeah, unfortunately you you spray out your, your pepper spray. Luckily you still have your turn oh, after you this. Hmm? I I'm just imagining buying due to friendly fire. Oh no, don't worry, you're not gonna get hit. It's not on that one. Um But you you do miss as you spray the tree next to it. It runs by you, and you see it's also looking at Lizzie, not even paying attention to you, uh, Shawnee. It, it does, I would say, look like they're very intrigued by her panic. Go ahead and let me see who's next. It will be Michael's turn. Michael says, ah, oh, blast it! Blast it all to hell! He swings down upon the one below you. With his bonus, he smashes it into the ground. It stops moving as his twigs and roots stop, like, writhing on the ground. It seems like this one is also gone. I have to, like, move it down here just to delete it, Jesus. No, wrong thing! Oh my fucking god. It's just the layers that's changed. Oh my god, okay, I, I'll have to put it back on. I guess I can't bring it back on. Z, control Z. I did, and it's, it, it, it did, it took it away again, again. Do it again? I know, uh, god. But then it just brought that guy back. That's what I'm just trying to, like. 
There we go. All right, now we're back. <laughs> uh, so which one is it that we're, we're killing? Is it this that one? one? Yeah. Michael just smashed that one into the ground. Damn this! What the hell? Hi, fuck this shit. Ah. He turns around. Free the rest of you. Don't want to fucking die. I'm going to. You better fucking keep moving. We just wanted to investigate. You got way too close. Neither of none of you are talking. You smacking up Chris around. You back up right now. And maybe we'll stop this fight right now. Uh, Chris, what would you like to do? I'm kicking this thing in the dick. Uh huh. All right. You go to kick it in its um crotch area. <laughs> Okay, it's, yeah, it's still a crotch area. It doesn't need, matter what it's got. Should I use physical device? Nah, screw it. Let's try roll 20 one more time. Hell yeah, kick the, 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 the oh, for fuck's tree sake. person in his tree dick. <laughs> you know what? I'll say it's fine. You hit because it doesn't really do much. You kick it in his dick and it just kind of looks at you. <laughs> In that case, I would like to repeatedly do it. You do it multiple times, like fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, and just not, it just kind of looks at you. And then when I do the last one, I'm like, so are we gonna be civilized or? And I look towards Lizzie, are we burning the rest of this forest? So, between Chris, okay, we're gonna we're gonna choose this. Okay, you, you tell me, I'm gonna give you guys an option. Shawnee, I know you want to save the fort. You'd rather not fight it. So. That's right. Because everyone else is offering and you're next, you, you guys can choose. Shawnee can do a persuasion or a, like, some kind of negotiation tactics. Or whatever the, I'll have to double check the, the, the D20 modern one. Whatever the, the, the talking one is. Or Chris can, because it's his turn now. Or Chris you can wait, let Shawnee do it, and you can give her the help action. Help action? Okay. Honestly, my rolls have been terrible. I'd rather help. Alright, as you do that, Shawnee, you look at them. They're not outright attacking you. The one that was being attacked attacked Chris. But the ones that haven't been outright attacked yet aren't attacking. They could have attacked Lizzie. They got real close and definitely could have. The This one looked like it was trying to bat it away, but it also only did it after it saw the dog. So you're getting really interesting vibes from them so far. What would you like to do and say? Okay. So, since speaking in Elvish seemed to work before, at least I understood it, I'm going to speak in Elvish, which means probably the most, I don't know if anyone else can understand that, but I'll make a, I'll make a diplomacy check, but um, she'll say, hey, how about how about we just talk this out? The dog's not here to hurt you. I know it probably probably seems that way, but it's I, I promise it's not. It's just it's a good boy. It's a really good boy. I think you are too, right? It's a uh, get the help action roll again. Nice. Sixteen. Okay. So would you guys like to wait? Lizzie is panicked, especially since it swung on her. She's about to attack again. Do you guys want to calm her down? What would you like to say to her? Lizzie, come over here. Come over here. Uh, It'll she, be okay. She runs into your arms, Shani, crying. It's okay. It's okay. I got you. We're going to get out of this. Okay. And with that, the ed she doesn't attack. Not provoking the enemies again. It goes to their turn. They stare at you. They're staring at her. The big one stares at the dog menacingly. Gets a little close. Doesn't swing. Doesn't do anything. Just looks at Chris, who is kicking it in a dick. This one stares at you and Shawnee. These ones get a little, again, like a little too close. They're getting real close, but they're not attacking. They're not offensive. They're just staring. Do you? They're not attacking you. Now I like to re, you know, say that again. They're not attacking you. They haven't done anything, and they're not going to do anything. It's going to go to your turn again. What do you do? Starting with uh, Michael. Michael just kind of looks, eh, I don't like this, but not doing anything. He's, like, lined himself up ready next to you guys to the fight if need be. 
And he's like ready to defend Lizzie and Shawnee and ready to kind of support you, Chris. But uh, he's not attacking yet. He's, he's ready in his action. If anything happens, he's going to swing. Chris, what would you like to do? I am going to get Jackson and go over to Lizzie and try and calm her down and show that she, look, Jackson's doing okay. I've got him covered. I've got you covered. She That's was holding him to her chest, but what you can do is you go up to her, you start petting him. See, like, he's fine. He's okay. See, he's not hurt. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm dribbling blood into his fur. <laughs> yeah, you're very hurt, but that's fine, I guess. Yeah, look, he's fine. He's fine. Don't worry about it. And if they come close again, then I guess we'll just have to do something about it. But they're not going to come and hurt Jackson again. And he looks at the closest one, almost daring him to contradict. In, like, intimidating him. Come on, you little bastard. Agree. The the big tree one nods its head. For the first moment, you just communicated with them and it worked. It nods its head to you. See? See? They're not going to do anything. Calm down. Shawnee. Yeah? Since you speak tree, apparently... I mean, I guess. I don't know if they understand what I'm saying. It, well, it's over to you. Otherwise, well... My plan can I'll... still work. It's just... They're not, they're not attacking us currently, so... I'll try. Hey, she calls out. Would you, would you mind keeping your distance? We're we're kind of scared right now. You say that, and they start to back away. But after, and this is where it gets real fucky, and Lizzie starts to panic. The one right in front of you with his non-bladed hand grabs Lizzie, jolts her arm out, so she ends up dropping Jackson to the ground. He kind of gives a yelp and runs to Chris. Chris. Jackson's right below you, scared. It they start they start backing up, but they start trying to take Lizzie with them. As soon hey, as he hey, starts hey. backing up, I would swing with the, the baton. I told him what would happen if they try and take other Lizzie or the dog. Alright, go ahead and give me an attack roll. You you definitely kinda are trying to bap it essentially on its wrist. Like, hey, fuck you, do not grab her. Yeah, basically I'm not trying to really kill it. I'm just trying to sort of like bop it on the head. No bad tree. Uh, 15. 15. You, you bop it on the wrist, slightly shattering it, but like more of a, uh, not like a, again, not like killing, just like a, a, a warning, essentially. Like, I fucking told you not to touch her. That kind of like warning, you know? It lets go of Lizzie. They, they all like look to each other and they all look to Lizzie. Lizzie's fucking panicked. She doesn't know why they're actively trying to pull her away from the group. She is very very wait panicked. a second wait a second he, he's still waving the baton around are you scared we're going to hurt her no, like all I, I sort of point at her threateningly as you point at her even remotely threateningly the the big one swaps places with her not the big one the the bladed one swaps like yeah. pushing her behind it I, I, I take the, the baton away and I'm like, oh, okay, that makes more sense. I, I put my baton back and look at Sean. Speak tree, just explain that we're together. We're trying to find out what's going on with her. We're trying to protect her. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to protect her, Shani says in, in Elvish. She's our friend. The tree kind of just looks to you. Lizzie, seeing a little bit more what's happening tries her best to take a deep breath you see her to she goes and tries to touch the branch thing and as she does it his head turns like an owl to her she freaks out and screams but then she's like okay please please i i want to go with th them and she points to the shawnee i like to go with her the, the the pretty lady over there please i just want to go with her and just sit next to her and and the 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 the, the, the intimidating detective guy and the, the really well put together dwarf guy. I just I just want to go over there with them, please. Please? You. You. And he points to the smaller ones at the back. One of you can come with us to see we don't need harm. But you need to behave yourself. Shawnee, they look to you. 
as if they barely, like, almost like they're brokenly understanding Chris, they look to you, the one who seemingly speaks well. So what we're basically saying is, she wants to come with us, but if you're worried about her, one of you can come with us too. Do you say this in uh, English or Elvish? In, in Elvish. In Elvish. Okay. They they look to each other. The big one grabs the two smalls here and gestures to this final one. This one sprints upwards this way. These guys right here end up sprinting after it this way, riding on top of the big one. They all go deep into the woods away from you guys, leaving you guys with just the bladed one. Well, I guess they speak Elvish. It's, I will say, Shawnee, um, do you have some kind of insight or insight role you can give me? Uh, let me double check D twenty five again. Do they have some kind of insight skill? Sense motive. Yeah, give me a sense, oh, yeah, sense motive. motive. Just because you are the one talking All to right. them, I'd like specifically to have you do this. Uh, not the greatest. I'm not really good with people or trees. You think they are more than likely letting this one be alone? And maybe gonna watch from a distance. Definitely not reporting back to anybody. Hey, I, I, I think they're I think they're watching us still. That, I suppose that's fine. We did say that the one can come with us. Um, hey, I've got I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Hey, you can't talk, can you? She says in Elvish. You can nod yes or no. The creature looks to you. It tilts its head for a second. Lizzie tries to walk towards you. It puts its arm between you and Lizzie and looks to you and kind of nods its head yes very slowly. Okay. Can you read? It tilts its head. Not sure what you mean by that. All right. Well, this is a long shot, but I'm going to give it a try. And so... She's going to look for, like, uh, you know, some, some dirt on the ground or some place that she can maybe, like, kind of crudely carve carve out some letters or runes. Any, is there any, like, patch like that on the ground anywhere? Uh, yeah, I mean, this whole area is kind of roughly muddy. It's, like, a very lightly rainy time frame. So it's, uh, it, everything's kind of able to be, you know, molded or, like, a stick put into it. You can, you can kind of draw whatever you need nearby this is this this is a long shot but i'm gonna try it and she starts to write in sylvan can you understand it nods his head very quickly now okay i think we're on to something so from so what you can tell with like language it seems that they can mostly understand elvish barely common or English, but definitely Sylvan. All right. Wow. I didn't think anybody used this anymore. This is so cool. And she's having like this total geek out moment. Oh man, I've got to bring my research here and you can help me with it. Um, um, where do we start? What do I say to them? What do I say to them? Lizzie says, please let me go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sorry. You um, love that you're uh, geeking oh, out oh. and she's panicked still a little bit as this thing with a blade on it still won't let her get to you guys fully. Okay, okay. So I'm going to write in the dirt. Lizzie says, would you please let her go? It looks to her and it tilts his head to her. It lowers his arm as she's able to rejoin you running into your arms, Shawnee. She holds you very, very tightly. She's very scared. Um... It just kind of tilts its head looking at her, as if it's disappointed. Oh. Hey, can you write? And I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the um 
the tree, whatever I was using to carve, maybe like, like a, a like stone a or something. Stick on the ground, yeah. Something that was already removed yeah, from a yeah. tree. Yes, I, w I wouldn't harm a tree in order to do it. Uh, it looks to you as you hand the branch. The branch molds with the twiggy boy and ends up becoming part of his hand. Um, he kind of just stares at it like, Oh, I have a twig as part of my hand now. Um, he tries to, like, draw on the ground. It kind of just makes squiggles and lines, trying to replicate what you're writing, but it doesn't really know what you're wanting from it. Huh. Um. Can so so she's gonna find another stick and write. Can you tell us what you want? It takes a minute. Just kind of like tilts its head again. Um. It points to Lizzie. And slams a fist into its chest. Oh. Okay. Oh. Lizzie, I think you do have a secret admirer. I don't know if you want me to do another sense motive on that or sure. Just sure, roll I think like that's valid <laughs> so. to be like, you know, to go with that. Yeah. <laughs> to be like, okay. you know what? Let's let's make sure you actually understand this. Uh, a little better than the first. You definitely get a sense of desperate longing. Yeah, he really likes you. Or she. I'm sorry, I didn't ask. I would say that... This immediately just pipes up. It's a tree. No gender, trust me. Hey, trees have gender. Then why did it not hurt when I kicked it in the dick? Ah. <sighs> Still can't get over that kicks it in the dick. Now can we be civilized? God. Did it work though, Isaac? Did it work? Eh, kind of. I guess you didn't attack and provoke him with a lot, which allowed Shawnee to uh, to do diplomacy. So yeah, I suppose it worked. Technically correct is the best kind of correct. <laughs> it um, it looks towards where its friends left. You hear running, lots of running. In fact in a little bit you guys hear like even more of them are coming lizzie says we need to go i don't want to be here anymore or we're gonna have to kill them i don't want them to be to come for me i don't want them to be in love with me we she's like muttering this in a like, kind of into your shoulder shawnee he the thing can't really hear it chris you can barely even understand what she's saying michael can't hear it that's how like quiet she is she's like muttering into your shoulder shawnee we we they're they're gonna harass us and then they're gonna come and kidnap me. When they're gone, they're gonna come kidnap me because they're not they're 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 being aggressive now. They know that we know, and so they come get me. They're not gonna. We have to. We have to make sure they never come for me. They're not because you're gonna stay with me. You don't have to go with anyone you don't want to. Chris just giving a little smile and a laugh. You're like, well, that went fucking quickly from uh, from group therapy to moving in. What is the Scooby Doo? Scooby-Who? Yeah, Scooby-Who, you know. He, he was Jackson a Doctor Doom. <laughs> Michael well, just looks at all of you. I don't know what the fuck's happening. I don't spake whatever you spake. And if I'm being honest, this whole thing's been fucked. Let us, let's try to leave before more come. Or, and if need be, we can try to ditch this guy here, but... We, we, I think before more comes, we need to make sure Lizzie's safe. Agreed. So he looks at the the the, the, the twig guy. Any of you know any lore or like evergreen history to know what the fuck this thing is? That's a good question. Both of you can give Shani me would. lore checks or history checks or whatever kind of knowledge checks is allowed in D20. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, Shani's uh, yeah, got a lot of knowledge. Have cryptid, right? I gave that to you as a, a one of the available yeah. things, right? Yeah, it was one of the things for lore, for knowledge. 
Okay. And luckily for me, I've got a plus three. You can either do cryptid or some kind of history check if you happen to also have history. I got 19. My word. Chris, you do not know much of this area, but when you were first joining the 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 force, they said to be careful whenever you went to the woods. If you saw things in the woods, report it to the forest rangers and then mind your own fucking business. They said, and we asked them, what the fuck, what the fuck is out there that I need to mind my own fucking business? Um, they did, your, your superior turned to you after, after, you know, you're like, hey, like, I'm, <laughs> the fuck you mean I need to mind my own business? And he just said, listen, you ever heard of a twig blight? I don't know. Then, At that point in time, he hasn't heard of it. Then you don't need to. You ignore it, you report it to the forest rangers, you come back to work, oh. and you deal with his, the, the city shit. And there is no real ore. You'll find out on your own. Yeah, you, you've known me a little while. I don't know anything. You think I'm going to give up a chance to learn something? Uh, he puts his hand behind his head. Listen. Don't mess with twig blights, alright? They're spirits of the woods. They, t And they're not the only thing out in the woods, alright? That's, that's my warning to you. If you see twig blights... You're entering a part of the forest that has worse things than Twig Blights in it. You leave that forest. He he then sits down at his, uh, his desk and starts reading a document, essentially ignoring you. He does that sometimes when he's just done talking to you. You you leave and that uh, that moment comes back to you. PC. What was that? <laughs> yeah, just thinking he's a scrub in PC. Now he's just going to repeat the same dialogue if I bother him. I, I, exactly. Exactly. Um, but, yeah. He's going to... He, he's basically going to repeat that. So you have this moment in your head where you say out loud and Shawnee and everyone can kind of hear Chris. You're like, Twig Blights. It's, um... Twig Blights. Yeah. Michael goes, oh, I, I might have heard a little bit of these. In the when you're a forester, you're told to Well, I mean, if you see a man made of twigs, avoid the Hey, wait a fucking minute. I have heard of you bastards. And it turns it, it keeps just turning his head between all of you. Um mm -hmm. between Michael, between Shawnee, between Chris and Lizzie. And as um, you guys all sort of kind of realize what this thing is. A, a twig blight. You guys see that it is indeed a... a it looks like a spirit it's made of roots, stones, twigs, etc. With its eye in the middle being made of... Looks like a big... Like almost like a, a pine cone smashed into a rock or something like that. Like it's a very... Very fucky... Like something is making it look as human as it can, right? It's, um, with this. It just backs away and watches you guys. It just walks over here, leans against the rock, and watches you guys. Uh, could someone tell me what's going on? Yes, we're leaving. Michael's like, very. I very quickly. I know we all have like our beliefs and all that, right? We all believe that things happen and things can be there, cryptids, all that. Um, I didn't expect spirits to be real. I didn't expect this to be real. I thought they were forced or, you know, like things. Wait, wait a fucking minute. We need to leave now. We need to leave. You said that tree hit you before, right, Chris? Yes. We need to leave now. They're obsessed with Lizzie. I don't know what is, but I, I, let's just go now. Now, Chris starts leaving. He, he grabs Lizzie by the hand and starts leaving with her. I mean, Michael. 
sorry, Michael. Michael grabs Lizzie by the hand, which also ends up dragging Shawnee a bit because she wants to hold Shawnee. And uh, hold on, hold on, don't don't just leave. Yeah, as we start to drag, the the guy starts walking with you guys. He's like, hmm. "You're forgetting two things. Number one, and I point towards the guy that's following us." Yeah, we're just gonna try to lose him eventually. And number two, it's not just Lizzie that they're obsessed with. Or did you miss the part where I was literally smacked around like a piece of cabbage since we entered into this forest? And he points at his entire bloody mess, his jacket, his jeans. Michael does nod what? his head. It looks like they have a grudge against you, but at least they stopped fighting you. For now, we, we have to try to make sure she doesn't get kidnapped and you don't get hurt more then. How about that? Hey, what if we take the tree guy with us? Sorry, was that a bad idea? Chris is just staring at Michael like, did you hear that? Michael, uh, sorry, sorry. I, 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 my bad, my bad. Michael, um, was thinking. Michael's like, uh. Well, I mean, maybe it has answers. Fine. Maybe it can help me with my research. Fine. He walks up, and I kid you not, walks up to the tree blight, looks him up and down. Let me see if he can even do this. I'm going to see if he can even do this, and we'll see if, um... I'm going to look at this thing's immunities, and if it can't be knocked out, it... Uh, uh, it can. Okay. Huh? I'm helping them. Huh? Me and Michael just have this mental communication. You guys look at each other. Your guys' eyes lock. And at the same time, you both swing at this thing's head. It gets caught off guard, goes to try to block. Go ahead and give me rolls. Both of you give me attack rolls. Go ahead. 17. And a 19. You guys knock this bitch out cold. <laughs> it lands on the ground. And this is the part where I look at Michael and I take off sprinting, grabbing with his hand. Ha! <laughs> awesome. You guys run. That guy's knocked out cold on the ground. You guys run. Through the trees, through the forest, you guys are running. You guys start to hear... <laughs> through the woods as you guys are running you guys see several chasing beside you as you guys are running this time seeing you run and having assaulted the other twig blight they're trying to incapacitate you now they don't seem like they're being deadly seems like they're trying to swing and knock you out chris as you're running one swings uh right next to you that misses you uh even with this bonus you duck Right below its uh, its branch, as it tries to swing uh, at you, I'm just gonna say it's like these dudes running next to you. Let me get the the music back up and going again. Uh, you guys, the action music. There we go. As you guys are now running through the woods, as you have two on either side trying to essentially take you down with the big guy, well behind you guys. <laughs> Chasing you down. You see, he's taking down trees. They definitely did not like you knocking that guy out and trying to run away. Uh, Michael, we'll start back at the top of the turn. Michael swings at the one next to him. Uh, barely hitting, and let's see his damage. If he does good enough damage. Oh, he, he cripples it, but it's not dead. Shaw, Chris, it is your turn. You guys are running through the forest. Lizzie's between you and Michael. Shawnee, you're in the back. Lizzie's kind of in the front by Chris and Michael. What would you guys, uh, Chris, what would you like to do? Is there another one on my side? Yeah, there's another one on your side. It is swiping yeah, at I'm you. Gonna try, I'm, I'm going to try and trip it. Trip it, wonderful. It as well. Awesome. Go ahead and give me an attack roll and explain how you do that. Yeah, that's not great. That's a 12. But essentially, I'm just going to take the baton and I'm going to swing at his legs, trying to get his legs out from underneath it. Just sort of blindly hit it on the, what I would assume would be the knee and just keep running. Hmm. Okay. What you're going to do is... Shawnee... Oh, not really, sorry. Lizzie is going to give you... 
That yeah, is I also full tons of damage. Fuck it, I'll say you hit. It's you're like barely missing this armor, but I'll say this one because this running is light is on the off foot. It's not gonna have his dex bonus. You hit it. Um, you deal four damage. You hit it in his knee. It slams his head into a tree, falling behind. It has fallen behind. It's not incapacitated though. That's all I'll give you. It, you know, you 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 were able to hit it enough to uh, like make it fall behind, but not to actually damage or incapacitate it. Yeah, fair. Then, let me see. I believe, Shawnee, it is your turn. The big one is behind you, like 40 feet. The one that's incapacitated is behind you, about 10 feet. And then there's one next to uh, Michael. What would you like to do? All right. All right. I'm going to take out one of my chemical light sticks. And I am going to... Um, I'm going to throw it back behind me as I'm running away. And I'm going to shout in Elvish, I got a grenade, so you better stay back. Okay, give me deception. Do you, is that a thing in this? In D20 Modern? Uh, what, would, what would that be? Uh, bluff. Bluff, give me bluff. Bluff? Alright. Yes. Uh. Okay, I'm gonna roll, and you gotta hope it's less than 10. All right, okay. so the big one stops. It stops dead in its track and stops to fall very far behind behind you. It's like, it like looks at it and it takes a second to try and like bap the, the glow stick around. And eventually after realizing it's not going to blow up, it starts chasing you guys again. But it it definitely is. It's a good several rounds behind now. It's not even going to be a threat unless you guys basically wait for it. Oh, okay. Shawnee, you do feel... I'm not even, uh, yeah. As you, as you say ahead. that, you feel in the woods um, a sense of magic going on all around you. you. You feel a sense of... like, connection to the woods and a magic. Um, you, you... You don't... You're not familiar with it yet, but as you're running and you look at all, all the stuff around you, you get this weird sense as if you're connected to the woods. And now that you're starting to see this eldritch magic come to life, something inside you feels connected to it. And as you do, you can sense another one in front trying to get ready to ambush you. Before you guys uh, even reach it, you suddenly get a sense for it. Almost like a preconception. The woods itself told you. Would you like to... Look out ahead! And with that, you guys are able to just move left and completely avoid it completely. It ah, tries to catch up to you guys, but it's a good several feet behind you now. As you guys are able to move to the left and completely avoid this one's uh, pathing. You don't know where that came from, but you feel something in the woods itself just whispered that to you, Shawnee. You get this weird sense of archaic magic inside you, but you keep running. It is now Lizzie's turn. Lizzie, panicked, um... It's calling for Jackson. Jackson's running with you guys. She leans down and picks up Jackson. Keep up, boy. Your tiny legs can't keep up. Keep up, keep up. And again, she, uh, this time, she's crying. And from her tears, you see puddles of water start to appear. And mud starts to track. Shawnee, you have to kind of go around it. But so does this, the guy behind it, causing them to start to slip up a little bit. Give me a dex check, Shawnee. And uh, so will this two twig lights behind you. As she, without meaning to, is crying, causing magical water puddles to appear. Go ahead, just because I uh, like you uh, a lot. Yeah. Roll again. <laughs> okay. That's better. Right? Much better. You're able to avoid the puddles relatively well and keep up with the group, while these two start to fall behind a little bit. Falling closer to the bigger one. Just the one on Michael's side. Then is back up to Michael. Michael's like, fuck this! I said get out of here and damn you all to hell! He misses uh, completely, but swinging takes off a, a huge chunk of a uh, tree. Calls out to Chris. Chris, fucking ping this thing in the head f for me, will ya? Chris, it is your turn. Yeah. You. Yeah, he's gonna... 
He's gonna do something that might not be very smart, but it's definitely gonna knock the shit out of this thing. Yeah, you're gonna switch place with Lizzie, moving her to the side as you get closer to Michael. Go ahead and let me know what you do. I am gonna throw, and I'm gonna power throw my pair of bolt cutters at it. You're gonna power throw a bolt cutters at it. Ooh, shoo! Okay, okay. Well, keep now. I just want to keep in mind you might, you probably won't get those back. That's okay. Yeah, no, I'm aware. All right. I'm willing to do that. Give me the throw. Bolt cutters is easy to pick up again, especially working for the police department. We've got plenty. Easy. You'll just have to come up with a lie for your boss about how you lost those. Oh, Go those were per those were personal ones. Oh, then fuck them. All right, throw it out. Give me your attack roll. Natural fucking 20. 24. I'm going to say this. You don't even have to throw them. You slam it over Michael's short head. Directly into the thing's, like, head. And as it starts to fall, Michael catches your, grabs your, uh... Your, your your things and hand them, hands them back to you. That nat 20 means you basically are able to almost slam it over its head easily without even throwing it. It falls nice. to the ground. You pick up your bolt cutters again and you guys are now just being followed behind. You guys are good three rounds from, from Lizzie's house and the edge of the woods. These two are coming up behind you and making a little bit of ground. That one behind it isn't gonna matter. But these two, one of them picks up the other, and you see them yeet the other one ahead of you guys. It flies through the air, landing directly in front of you, Lizzie, and Chris. It's going to try to uh, clothesline both of you. Go to give me a dex check. Dex or reflex? Reflex. Give me a reflex. Same with Lizzie. All right, she, she gets a decent roll. I don't know why. She gets decent. I have a plus seven and I got less than she did. Go ahead and roll your physical dice. Ignore roll 20 for yourself. I know that's just shit for you. Just roll your physical dice. 23. There we go. You're both able to Neo kind of slide underneath it. And Shawnee, you have enough time just to straight up just move underneath it. It wasn't last minute for you. Uh, you have enough time okay. just to maneuver. Michael's able to go under underneath it because he's short. You're able to kind of just go whoo, underneath it and move. This guy is now behind you guys. You guys are now running, and you have two turns left. It is now just this one on you, Shani. It looks like it's going to try and shove you down uh, to try and, like, make you fall behind the, the pack. Does a 12 hit you? Uh, yeah, I, so my defense is 12, so I think that just hits. Shit, okay. It's going to shove you down you fall behind a little bit everyone else you notice shawnee start to fall behind as it shoves her into a tree do you stop and let the others catch up a little bit to try to keep up with shawnee or do you keep running and let shawnee try to keep up i scream at shawnee to look out and then i'm going to drop some caltrops all right you drop caltrops now shawnee would be affected by those is the thing even if you give her the heads up yeah, yeah no no i know it's, it's the risk that i'm taking all right, go ahead and run, Shawnee. You're able to be slowed down by them, but they are damaged by them. Because he gave you the heads up, you're still slowed down, but you're not damaged by them. They're damaged, and hopefully the rolls are going to be good enough. One of them is pulled back because the damage is fucks up his foot. The other one is still on you. So Shawnee is 10 feet behind with only one on her. You guys are 10 feet ahead. Um, Shawnee... What would you like to do? I'm going to let you have another turn as it's basically just you versus this thing right now as they're running ahead. Okay. Let's see. What can, what can I do? What can I do? Um, I'm going to... Let's see. I'm going to prepare to, like, take my um, coat off. Like, if they try to grab me, I'm going to kind of, like, slip out of it. Can I just, like, prepare to do that as yeah, I'm running? Yeah, you can prepare to do that and then... Spend the rest of your action just moving extra fast. Uh huh. Just sprinting okay. That's what I'll do. and move, getting ready to lose your jacket. Got you. Um, yep. It goes, funny enough that you say that, it actually does go to grapple you because you're falling behind to try to tackle you. Uh, as it does, it actually fails. You don't even have to lose your jacket. It slams into a tree and you're able to maneuver around it. Um, you're starting to get back up ahead. You're only five feet behind the group, but the creature is five feet behind you. It is going to try and ping you with a branch as you guys come to your final turn running. It hits you. Let's see, it deals... Yes, it does. 
It deals eight points of damage as a branch pierces through your shoulder. Uh, yep, I'm down. <laughs> you're down? Okay, as you go down, I'm down. I... you're unconscious. L Lizzie and Michael stop to run back to you. You're only five feet. They go to pick you up. Chris, what do you do? I run back with the bolt cutter still in my hand, and I'm swinging at the thing. All right, go ahead and give me an attack roll to try to kill the thing. These things are catching up, but not, they're not at you yet. You have two turns where they catch up. These two are going to try to pick up. Clean. You slam it. Go ahead and deal uh, the damage. So three. One plus three. I don't know why I didn't add the two. Okay, you slam it in. It's staggered back as they pick up Shawnee and run. They're running. You guys are now a little delayed. Chris, you're going to have to fight it off for one more turn as as they get away with Shawnee and enter the parking lot. What? It goes to swing at you. It misses completely. This branch slamming into the tree. What would you like to do? I'm going to finish this thing off Johnny Cage style. I'm going down and we're cutting the bitch. Awesome. Going to give me your attack roll. Okay, that's terrible. 13. Still hits. You hit. You slam. I'm going to say with the damage dealt, you were able to break its head off already. And with your strength and everything, it's its twiggy body falls apart around, uh, in front of you. It, it was not exactly the most uh, stable of creatures. With that, you guys are able to run. You guys are out of the forest and back into the parking lot. Shawnee is unconscious. But as you guys reach the edge of the forest, they all stop chasing you. They're all... They all stop. They look at you. <laughs> Noise is made from deep in the woods as they all silently slam their, their branches into the other trees, making loud clicking, clacking, duh, duh, almost knocking sounds. Very ominous. It's just a bunch of clicking, clacking. Shawnee Bad lays, trees. Bad. Uh, Michael lays Shawnee in front of your your tree, uh, the cars, but then Lizzie says, "Bring her up to her bed." Uh, they drag uh, you, Shawnee, up to her bed, and you are now laying on her punk rocker style bed. Chris is still downstairs. Chris, you're He's downstairs. He's just staring at the forest, like we warned you. I'm not gonna burn your forest down now. I'm not going to keep Lizzie away from you either. And I know they can only understand parts of what he's saying. So he's just repeatedly pointing at them. <laughs> we will come back. And we will deal with this in a good, respectable, civil manner. Or I'm going to see just how hard I can kick you until you form a dick. <laughs> and then he's just going to start turning around, limping upstairs with his bolt cutters in hand. As you get inside, you see Michael is holding Shawnee's hand, making sure, trying to check her pulse, all that. Well, Lizzie is coming out with supplies. She has cleaners. She has, like, basic med kit supplies, basically. Um, she hands you a bandage. She starts bandaging you up while Michael takes care of Shawnee. Actually, no, opposite. Michael starts taking care of you. She hands uh, Michael stuff to take care of you while she starts taking care of Shawnee. You know, she, she looks at Shawnee with a, um, a softness as she tries to take care of her. Shawnee, after like 30 minutes, you wake up with, let's say, half your health. Okay. As you have bandages uh, wrapped around your shoulder. Chris, you have bandages on your hand and in your uh, side. Michael has cleaned it. Um, but while this is all happening, Michael asks you, Hi. Do you think that was all real? Like, I know you're bloody, and that, that happened, but... I mean, do you think that was just people in my costumes, or... I mean, that that was... <laughs> uh, I suppose you missed the last few seconds. No, that was real. I took the thing's head clean off, and there was no blood, there was nothing. So, Shani's points weekly to, uh... To, I imagine, like, a lot of her survival stuff is kind of piled somewhere on the floor and she kind of points to it and is like phone check phone Lizzie goes and grabs your phone uh, it's still recording alright I'm gonna 
Uh, it has, though, gonna... been slightly damaged on the top left, but it is still recording. No. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go check the footage and and see what I can make of it. It looks like the footage itself, up to the point that you were stabbed, is fine. It looks like when it got stabbed, it took out the camera. It was real, all right. Lizzie breaks down into tears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for doing this to you. I'm sorry for making you get hurt, Shawnee. I'm sorry for everything. I'm really sorry. This is all my fault. You're all not okay because of me. And now, and now those things are out there. We know when they're out there. It's alright. You, you didn't cause this. It, it, it's not your fault. But they want me. They want me. They, they hated Chris for some fucking reason, but they wanted to kidnap me. Well, I mean, I can't blame them for hating Chris, but them wanting you, that's not your fault. <laughs> Jackson comes and licks you, Chris. <laughs> I just start petting Jackson, looking up, shaking my head, thinking, next time I'll leave you to die. <laughs> Um, as you're petting the doggo and just enjoying some good pets, um, Jackson, uh, drops from his mouth a piece of branch that has, like, a symbol on it. Cryptid check. Yeah, cryptid check, go ahead. Seventeen. Seventeen. Um, you're able to... You know that Evergree, Evergrowth has some real deep-seated indigenous and old-school spiritual kind of woodsy roots. And you're vaguely aware of this. You have not been here long enough to know it deeply. But I would say you are probably aware that this might be some kind of indigenous symbol or kind of symbolism for uh, maybe nearby, um, like, old school kind of uh, culture or even magic or uh, civilization. It's just something with the lore. You don't know where it comes from, if it's an old civilization, if it's a culture, if it's a symbol for magic. You just know that it's something nearby, whether it's indigenous, spiritual, woodsy. It's just something that has um, relatively been known from uh, that kind of crowd. Yeah. Hey, can, he's can keeping I see that, that to himself. Oh. Okay. No, no, he's keeping the the knowledge to himself. You no, know, you can definitely take a look. I'm not. I'm not really sure what this is. Yeah. Let me let me see that. There's something on there. Yeah, actually, hold on, let me, because I can go over to Sean here. Uh, while you take a look, I forgot, let me draw it out for you guys real quick. That's my bad for not doing it for you, Griff. You saw this first, but since you hand it to her, everyone will see this. Um, that doesn't really appear gray. I'll do the, it's a dark green, like moss, but I'll, I'll do it with a light green, just so you guys can see it. Okay, so, it's going to be kind of like, eh. Uh -huh. Kind of like ram horns, and then there's like a skull in the middle. I'm not a great artist with my, my mouse, but it's like a skull in the middle with ram horns on the side, and then some like lines kind of going around them all around with this one up here, and then there's like eyes that look to be like real well defined on the skull, and it's like a long skull, maybe like a, like a moose skull. But there's no antlers, there's ram horns. It's really weird. Alright, Shani's gonna copy that into one of her notebooks to research later. Yeah, absolutely. Would you like to also give it a cryptid check to see if you heard of anything? Oh, sure. Sure. Let's see. For some reason, the write-in skills, I can't click them. Oh. Oh, well, uh, I guess if you want, you can roll it and just let me know what the bonus is. Yeah. I'll just use, um, oh, I just left the 
I believe yeah. it's just your intelligence bonus. Mm -hmm. Um, I, well, I put some points into it, so I think it's plus seven. So yeah, if um, you put some points into it, then probably plus seven. Twenty-three. Okay, so you know, twig blights come from spirits, and um, it is the indigenous people you have talked to have talked about old chaos magic. You did not think it was real. Well, until tonight, really. You thought it was maybe interesting, cool, but you didn't think magic was real. But then I mean, you just saw twig people, and you, you definitely had that premonition, and the woods told you something. I mean, you, you, I mean and, and then she lit that thing on fire with by saying burn, and the word came out on fire and lit it on fire. I mean, there's something going on, and you look at this, and as you have that minor panic attack in your head, you, you, you focus yourself and you think about it, and you remember that, witches and the witch people like of ye old wiccans used to do a lot of foresty creatures like this um from where you looked up they liked tree servants and twig blights and different kind of uh like satyrs and stuff like that witches and wiccans would really love some kind of uh naturey spirit like this Huh. So, uh, what I will say about Johnny's character is, I think that she's been convinced that it is real, but she hasn't found any proof of it yet. So she's mm -hmm. really excited about this. She's like, "Oh man, we, this is it is real. I knew it. I knew it." Michael looks at you. You're so excited. Isn't the whole reason we're in fucking therapy is because we didn't want it to be real? <laughs> Um, uh, I just don't know what's going on. I, I don't know anything. That Lizzie goes, that I just went to therapy for help, not necessarily because I didn't believe it. Michael, who clearly was the only one trying to use therapy to essentially reassure, for, reassure himself that everything's okay, not necessarily to understand himself, looks at you guys and goes, oh, all right, well, fuck, I guess that's just me then. <laughs> Lizzie, um, puts a hand on you, Shawnee. Are you okay? You you got knocked the fuck out. I thought you might have died. Yeah. Yeah, it was a that was a that was a close one. I'm I'm still a bit woozy, but this is just too exciting. I cannot wait to get back to my research. So what what do we do now, though? Lizzie says I, we're not strong enough to to go in there and fight them and go deep and see. What or who 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 was that deep in the woods making the noise? Do, do, do you think I can stay with one of you for a bit, and then when we're stronger, we come back? You can stay with me. Okay, I, I won't go all the time. I'll just maybe every other day or weekends or just like every now and then, just uh, just for a little bit. If it makes you feel safer, you can alternate between myself and Shawnee. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just yeah, don't want You don't them, ever need to come back here. I just don't want them to find me and hurt one of you guys by following. She just looks very legitimately distressed. She starts uh, to begin to pack her stuff immediately. She doesn't want to be around. Michael says, you could use our trucks to carry your stuff. Uh, Shawnee, you, instead of getting an Uber, do you want us to ride you back? Yeah. Yeah. That, that'd be good. Um, but before we go... So Shani's going to take out uh, the good stuff that she got um, at the at the magic shop or apothecary or wherever. Uh -huh. And she's going to start she's going to start burning some good stuff and just waving it around to to protect the place just in case. You're Does she keep moy? You're trying to sage the area, and then you're also essentially saging yourselves, trying to make sure no one can track you guys. Uh -huh. So you're doing kind of a, a multi-purpose. You're trying to keep her area safe so that if um, she does come back, it's a little safer. And then on top of that, cleanse both her, you guys, and Jackson as well to make sure that there's nothing following you guys. Um, go ahead and yeah, give me a the... survival check to see how well you kind of perform this. Oh, okay. I'll get the cars for good measure, too. Yeah. Fine. Once we're done with that, though, I do need to get going. All good. We're going to wrap it up uh, right here as you guys start to head on homes for the day. 
you got you do it successfully and i think you do it very well um for what you do know and what you're able to do you do it well all right uh with that you guys uh lizzie is gonna plan on staying with you shawnee for the night and you guys will go about your normal things until next therapy session or until you guys investigate more but for now we'll end it here as you guys start to head home uh michael will take lizzie and shawnee home chris you're uh free to go do whatever oh chris <laughs> we want the table yeah i got that for you yeah yeah why not just let me let me put it on the back of my truck yeah you guys move over the table you got shawnee stuff in the back you got the table and chris is back you guys start to head off and you guys relax the night lizzie meets uh shawnee do you have roommates or is it just you i had a roommate she's right. not around anymore right bad question yeah <laughs> make yourself bad. at home <laughs> um lizzie is like oh thank you she tries to make herself as comfortable as she can without intruding jackson is happy just to be you know hanging out with you guys michael helps to bring yourself in and he goes off on his own thing um chris you go home you set up your table how how do you guys each kind of wind down for the day before you go washing the blood out of my clothes and then going to bed because i've got a knife test in the morning all right you go and get ready for bed shawnee how about yourself shawnee just for good measure is gonna use um some more of the good stuff on her place I think she does this every so often, like maybe every week or so, mm -hmm. since her roommate vanished. Um, and yeah, I think she's going to make sure her wound is taken care of and get ready for bed and probably plan to hit the books in the morning. And maybe if things aren't getting better, go see the go to the med center and get checked out. All right. Sounds good. So we'll end it there. I'll get writing for either next week or the week after. Um, right now. We're, I believe we're going to do week by week. The only reason we didn't come by last week is we were all a little bit burnt out and busy. Um, but for now, though, everybody, thank you very much for watching if you have been. We'll hopefully be back next week, if not at the very least the week afterwards. Um, I am going to raid, let's see. Good old fried biscuits. Go give him a hello, hello. Say hello to him, everybody. Thank you very much for watching if you have been. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. All right. Thank you very much for hanging out with me, guys.